Yay Networks. Welcome to another episode of Plastic Surgery Uncensored. I'm your host, Dr. Roddy Raban, and we have an awesome episode for you today. It's about breast implant sizing. You're going to want to check it out. It's super interesting. And for many, it seems very straightforward. But in reality, it turns out to be a major uh, complicating issue when it comes to any type of breast enhancement. So what are we talking about? When a woman decides to have any type of breast enhancement, that is a breast augmentation and or a breast lift with an implant, an implant has to be selected. Naturally, one of the biggest components of this surgery is size. What size should we select? What size do you want to be? What size are you trying to avoid? So um, picking an implant size, it turns out to be really complicated. Anyone who's had breast augmentation and is unhappy with their size will tell you that, God, that's not what I asked for. It's quite common that one thinks of sizing in just the simple terms, letters, A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. So someone will come into their plastic surgeon and say, hey, Dr. Raban, I am an A cup and I'm hoping to do an augmentation or enhancement and I'd like to be a C cup. And the expectation or the hopes or the misunderstanding is that they think I know what that means. As if to say, I want this cabinet 36 inches tall. The reality is that unlike measurements like height or weight, which are very specific, breast sizing is completely and totally ambiguous. So usually what happens is you ask a woman and you'll say, what size do you want to be? And almost always patients will describe it. I want something natural, something that fits my frame, something that's appropriate, something that no one will know, just a little more volume, like kind of when I was pregnant, et cetera, et cetera. So why is a woman describing it? She's describing it because it's easier for her to explain to you what she wants through a description than through a specific. When you build a cabinet, you don't say, I want the cabinet kind of tall or sort of tall or really tall. You say, I want a 36 inch cabinet. And the reason you say 36 inches is because it's measurable. With breasts, it's not that way. It's so much more complicated. Why? Because when you walk into Victoria's Secret and you pick up a bra, the same woman can get into like four different bras. So a 32A, rather, excuse me, a 32C depends on whether or not it's padded, non-padded, underwire, lace. Are you talking 32 or 34? Are we talking Victoria's Secret or Bloomingdale? Are you menstruating? Have you gained a little weight? So all those variables end up playing a major role in sizing. So when you ask a woman, what size are you? Often they're like, well, I mean, I'm like a 32, 34, B, C. I don't really feel a C, but a B is too tight. And so here is the biggest problem. When you go to your doctor and you want to get an augmentation, you and your surgeon better damn well figure out what size you're going to be at the end. And so the surgeon and you have to come up with a plan, a method, something that's going to help make sure that you get what you want. Now, what is that? So one method is this patients will come in, say, I want something natural and sort of defer to their surgeon. You're the expert. You're the one who does this every day. That is a disaster waiting to happen. Your surgeon's natural may be completely different than your natural. There are many women who have ginormous breasts who think it looks natural. So the last thing you want to do is defer to your surgeon. Now, your surgeon can play a role. They can give you some guidance, but never let them pick for you. Next, you'll say, you know, I want to be, I don't know, I just want to be a small C or I want to be a full C. And your surgeon will say, got it. No problem. Also a terrible, terrible outcome waiting to happen. Because again, you think that they know what the hell a full C is. And then you wake up from surgery, you get to see your breasts and you're like, oh my God, these are huge. Now you and your surgeon are arguing. This is not a full C. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. And the problem is there's no way to confirm that. Unlike the height or weight that we talked about, sizing, there is no confirmation. 
So what do we do? Well, what most surgeons do is they don't want to deal with this sizing thing altogether because sizing leads to a lot of unhappy people. And the last thing you want as a surgeon is a patient to come back after you've done your surgery and be like, hey, Dr. Raban, I'm unhappy. Well, why are you unhappy? My breasts are too big. My breasts are too small. We don't want to deal with that. So what's the best solution? Let you pick. You pick the size. You actually pick the damn implant. I can't tell you the number of patients who come see me for breast augmentation who've seen other surgeons and they come in going, I want a 325 moderate profile mentor smooth implant. I mean, like, what the hell? How the hell do you know you need a 325 moderate plus smooth mentor implant? The way that you know it is that you and a surgeon figure that out. So what do we do, surgeons? What we do is we give you a bra. You then do what's called volumetric displacement. You fill that bra with some volume. That can be implants. That can be sand. That can be rice. That can be peas. That can be whatever. And the objective is for you to wear a T-shirt or a shirt with that bra in and that volume, let's say an implant, and for you to figure out what looks good on you. Okay, what's wrong with that? That sounds great. So you do that and you're like, oh, this looks great. I like this size. We take a look at the implant you selected. We all confirm that you, aka the patient, picked this particular size. And now I'm off the hook. I will bring to the operating room those implants. Great. And I will put those implants in. Great. And you will never look like the way you did when you were trying them on with your bra. An implant in a bra and an implant in your body have nothing to do with each other. There is absolutely no correlation. That is why so many patients, and if you read reviews, after surgery are complaining about too small, too big, we missed the mark. So why would we do that? The reason we do that is when you come back and you're like unhappy and you're pissed off, Who's to blame? You are. <laughs> you picked the 325 moderate plus smooth silicone implant from Mentor. You picked it. And all we did was do what you wanted. Remember, this is patient centric, means it's about you. You get to drive this truck. In the past, it was very paternalistic, doctor driven. We choose for you. You don't know what you're talking about. So now it's great because you get to pick everything, but you don't know what the hell you're talking about. There's even goes so far as having a computerized program where they take a 3D image of your chest and then we put in what's called virtual implants and we expand your chest and we do that so that again, you the patient can pick your implants. So me the doctor doesn't have to deal with you the patient being unhappy. All right, so we've clearly established that that's a shitty process and I've clearly established that's not what I do. So what the hell do I do in order to size patients. Okay, so the truth of the matter is that every method of sizing patients sucks. But if you take multiple methods of sizing patients and you superimpose them on top of each other, then the likelihood of you getting it right goes up exponentially. So the way I do my sizing is as follows. I divide your sizing into three very distinct methods. One is the verbal or mental size. One is the physical size. And one is the visual size. What the, the hell does all that mean? The verbal and mental size is literally the size you think you want to be. So what size do you want to be? Oh, I want to be natural. I don't know what natural means. I want it to look pretty. I don't know what pretty means. Well, I'm an A cup now. At least I think I'm an A cup. And I want to be a C. Okay, do you want to be a full C or a small C? I want to be a small C. Okay, got it. We've now established what you think you want to be. We definitely know you don't want to be a double D. And now we have to figure out if this C, small C, is realistic. And if that's the same small C, I think is a small C. Next, we measure you. We physically measure your entire chest and all of the anatomical landmarks your sternum to your nipple, your nipple to your fold, the base of your breast, the size of your areola, 
All these parameters get measured. And what does that tell me? It tells me what size you can't be. It doesn't tell me what size you should be. It doesn't tell me what size you'll be happy with. It tells me what size of implant will not fit in your chest. If you are a size nine shoe, I know for a fact a size five shoe will not fit. It will, your foot will not go in to that shoe. So if your chest diameter and measurements are a certain way, how on earth am I going to get an implant into your chest that's larger than your chest? And the way surgeons do that is they expand and dissect and destroy your anatomy. So I tell you physically what is the max you can be. The last method of sizing is the visual for which we're going to take a break and come on back and I'm going to tell you how that works. So hang tight. We'll be back with Plastic Surgery Uncensored in just a moment. All right, welcome back to Plastic Surgery Uncensored. We're doing our episode on breast implant sizing. We've discussed the verbal slash mental sizing method. We've discussed the physical size method. And now we are at the visual size method. So what does that mean? So what we do, or rather, excuse me, what I do is that every single patient that I operate on, we have a separate meeting during which time you will get on an iPad and you will go through hundreds and hundreds of photos. And what I want you to do in that exercise is select three photos that you love the size. We don't care what size it is. We don't care what name you want to call it. I want you to select three photos of breast that you're like, yeah, that looks pretty good. I think that looks good. I'm going to have you select three patients whose size you think is just a little bit too big. Like, yeah, these are nice, but I think they're too big for me. And the same is true of three examples of breasts that are just a little too small. So what you've now done for me is you have visually created the spectrum of sizing that you like. Now, remember, I don't care what size they are. I just want you to show me what you like, what you think is big and what you think is small. Now, what most surgeons do, as I told you, is they will order the implant you selected and have that in the operating room. When the surgery is done, you will 100% get the implant you guys discuss. That is not how I do it. I have a closet in the operating room. And in that closet is every single size the manufacturer makes. Hundreds of thousands of dollars of implants. I mean, you open up the catalog and every damn size they make, I have. 100, 125, 550, 675, moderate profile, high profile, every implant, sterile, in a box, ready to go. In addition, I have exact sterile copies of those implants, which I call sizers, also ready to go. So you're on the operating room table. You're asleep. Your photos, the bigs, the smalls, and what you like are on the wall. And I then make the pocket in which these implants will go. Now, having done this as many years as I have, I have a pretty damn good idea of what implant will like you get you to where you want to go. Now, remember, most patients, I'd say 80 to 85% of patients have a decent amount of asymmetry. So I will put in the implants that I think make you look like the photo you selected. I then sit you up like Jesus with your hands on your side supported. Now you're asleep. You can't feel any of this. And then I actually look at the photos you selected and you, and then I say, oh, wow, that looks way too big. Oh, yeah, and her right breast is still bigger than her left breast. And I sit you back down and exchange the sizes for others. And I'll do that exercise until what? I do that exercise until you look like the photo you selected. Therefore, I have no idea in advance what size implant we will be using. I also have no idea in advance 
that when you go to Victoria's Secret after surgery and you buy a bra, what bra size you're going to select? I have no idea what you're going to select. All I know is you'll show up at the office at the end of a week. We remove your bandages. You go in front of the mirror. And what do you know? You look like the photo you selected. Now, if when you go to Victoria's Secret, you end up being a 32Q or a 34W, we don't care. We don't care about the letter. We don't care about the CCs. We care that you look like what you wanted to look like and what you showed me. Now, the reason why visual works so great is because let's say you told me you wanted to be a full C. And I said, got it. And you wake up and I'm like, you're going to love these. This is the best full C I've ever made. You may come and tell me, this is no full C. This is huge. Because we may be speaking about different full Cs. The reason why the visual works so well is it makes us speak the same language. In the event you're speaking Japanese and I'm speaking Chinese, we confirm that our full C's or our D's or whatever you call them are the same. Now, this method happens just to be the method that I use. It's very compulsive. It's very time consuming. It's a pain in the butt to have all these implants and ready to go. Naturally, it's easier for me to just let you pick an implant, pop it in, call it a day, and it's on you. But I feel strongly that I would be doing you a disservice and that my revision rate due to size, which is essentially negligible, would be upwards of 20% and higher because that's just what happens. You just won't get it right. So it is tantamount that if you want to get a breast enhancement, any implant is being used, you and your surgeon have confirmed a method of sizing that you believe is very accurate and you feel comfortable with. Do not for a minute assume that your surgeon knows what the hell a C or full C is because I assure you he or she does not, nor do you, nor does Victoria's Secret. I hope that all makes sense. Breast implant sizing is an art form and it requires dedication, commitment, and being compulsive in order to get the accuracy and the outcomes that I think patients want and ought to have. And that's it. That's how I do my breast implant sizing. No magic, no magic wands, no sophisticated software, old fashioned time and energy. All right, I think that pretty much does it. I think that explains my philosophies and also underscores how important breast implant sizing is. Do not take it for granted. Take your time, make sure you see enough surgeons so that you feel comfortable that at the end, your natural is gonna be their natural. And that's it. That wraps up another episode of Plastic Surgery Uncensored. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share this podcast with your friends and family, anyone you think that might be interested. And as always, download, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next week. This is Dr. Raban. Thank you for listening to Plastic Surgery Uncensored with Dr. Roddy Raban. We would love your feedback. If you enjoyed this episode or if you find our podcast helpful, tell us why. Leave us a review and make sure you subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. If you have a topic you would like for us to discuss in an upcoming episode, please reach out to us on Instagram at Dr. Roddy Raban, on Facebook at Roddy Raban, or at RoddyRaban.com.